Hi, I'm Joe, this is Doug. We're car audio specialists here at Tent World. Today we're gonna to discuss all pass filters, how to identify them, and how to utilize them in your audio upgrade. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and let us know if there's any topics you want us to cover. We mentioned what we're gonna be doing here today, which is gonna be all pass filters. Tell us a little bit more about what all pass filter is and what it's used for. An all pass filter can be several different things. For our purposes, it is a, a DSP trick or effect that is used to um, kind of simulate doing time alignment, but to make it so that both front seat passengers get a better sound stage than they would if it was just standard left and right audio. Um, it's essentially uh, an EQ band, but instead of changing a level or a gain at a certain frequency, it switches the phase of the signal at that frequency. So it allows you to simulate doing time alignment without the negative effects that time alignment causes for other passengers. If you're in a car, you can time align to the driver's seat and the driver can have a fantastic sound stage and image. You've got every speaker timed individually and it really improves the sound. But what that does is make it incredibly worse for the passenger because it's completely opposite of what the driver's seeing. Adjusting time so that speakers seem the same distance and now for the passenger, they're way off. So the reason we do that is when you do time alignment, and we can show you with our little tool that we've got here, some of the effects, but if you use time alignment, you're getting the speakers in phase with each other, at least close to phase. Um, and it's putting it really out of phase for the passenger. So if we, instead of switching that, we switch the phase of the signal itself, then the effect is the same for both driver and passenger, and you can create a better image for the two people without any negative effects. It sounds like a great thing, but it can cause a lot of issues when we're upgrading our stereo systems, right? Absolutely. Integrating into the factory head unit, and but adding amplifiers, subwoofers, and so on and so forth, especially with the DSPs, it can create a whole world of problems out there. It can. And so the, the, the key to this whole video is we need to know what signals we have so we know what we can do with it, whether it's best to use what's already done or what we do to combat that if we're trying to go. You know, if you've got a factory signal that's already got an all-pass filter in it and you want to create the absolute ultimate listening environment for that driver, you're going to have to counteract what's already been done to make it work better. Now, you're saying counteract, but you can't undo what's there, right? Correct. You can't, you can't undo an all-pass filter. So what you can do is simulate that same signal on the opposite side so that it, in fact, doesn't happen because we're never going to hear that both phases are switched because phase is relative. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over some of the tools that we're going to do. And the most important tool that we're going to use for this is actually an RTA. Now, there's many different variations of RTAs. You can get a computer-based RTA. Um, Audio Control makes a, a really nice one, which is uh, the um, DM RTA, right? Um, we can get you links on the parts that you can use to use a regular laptop to get the RTA as well. But for the everyday install bay, I use my iPad, download a good app on it, and we're gonna get what we need out of this. But this would also work on an Android as well, but the interface is gonna be different. So you can get the RTA app, but you may not be able to use the interface on an, on an Android phone, okay? Most of these parts you probably already have in your install bay. Um, you know, we're using an SNI 35 high, high low level converter, right? We're using a set of RCAs to mini adapter. We're using a line level adapter, and we'll have the links for you guys um, where you can get those uh, available for you, okay? And then some test probes right there. And then when, obviously, because we're running, you know, an Apple uh, product, you have to use the lightning cable uh, um, to speaker adapter that comes with um, your Apple product to get the signal into the iPad or your iPhone to be able to read the, um, the, the measurement that we're looking for. And then one other key thing is when we're doing this test, we have to get some type of audio signal, right? We're not just gonna play regular audio. Right? Correct. So we're gonna play a pink noise, which is gonna be playing all frequencies from 20 to 20, and but we wanna make sure we play a mono signal. Absolutely. Right. We have to know that the signal's the same on the left and right side so that we can compare that. Right, so what we've done here is, uh, we got two versions of our tools, right? One that I put together, one that uh, Doug's put together, and they're gonna do the same thing, but it's just, you know, how, how you feel. I took mine, I cracked open my SNI 35. I put my test leads on here. I got my RCAs soldered directly onto the board. 
and now all I would have to do is plug in this line level right here and then plug in my adapter which would plug into my uh, iPad okay Doug has done the, pretty much the same thing however what he's done is he put it inside of a project box and explain how you did yours because I actually like yours better than, than mine I've, I've done this for years uh, so I made mine a little bit different what we're really going to do with this is we're going to look at the signal of the left channel and of the right channel and then of both of them together at the same time so instead of having to unplug test leads or whatever I can be connected the whole time and I have switches so I can turn on and off each channel independently um, or at the same time so it's just an easier way to compare signals and what all we're doing is we're taking the high-level signal from an amplifier or radio whatever uh, source it is we're running through the SNI 35 so we drop the level down and we're isolating it so that we can now sum those two channels together to see what the combined signal is with the switches I'm independently switching out the center conductor from the RCA output of each of these so we have left channel and right channel uh, and the control over those the grounds are together as they always will be with an auxiliary jack probably gonna spend about I, I know I, when I picked up all this stuff it was about 75 bucks right yep. if you buy a that uh, DMRTA from audio control that's a $700 device right yeah, so yeah. you know this is something that is an inexpensive way to start doing it and as you get more familiarized and you want more accuracy you want to, to be able to do more then you can go out and buy that expensive tool Abs yep. your budget allows buy the expensive tool you ain't gonna regret it and you can write it off on your taxes there you go so what we're gonna do now is obviously we're gonna grab our tools or bring in the car and then we're gonna get our hands dirty we're gonna take the car apart we're gonna actually start um, doing the testing and we're, as we're doing the testing we're gonna start explaining what we're looking for right because that's yes. that's what it's all about alright so we got our setup here uh, going and what we want to show you is um, right now the volume is set all the way down to zero you can see where our curve is and Doug explain to us our curves what are we looking at here well the the RTA is just giving us a, a real-time analysis go figure uh, of each of the different frequencies that of signal that's coming in this is the base on this end uh, on up to uh, the the highs tweeters whatever if we were to unplug this you could see as we talk it moves around um, what you're seeing when we're plugged in is its natural state waiting for a signal because we don't have that turned on right now so now we're back to our there now we're back to our microphone we're playing pink noise and so what we're gonna do is uh, right now we're gonna test the speakers individually and then and that's what Doug is gonna do by flipping the switch on and off like right now he has the driver side um, speaker on and this, you could see the curve here relatively flat and smooth if we turn that off and we turn the right channel on it's relatively flat and smooth pretty much almost looks identical to the left side but if we put both together we see a huge dip suddenly appear and you notice that dip happened right here around 250 hertz and then this is probably about 400 hertz as well <clears throat> so if you have two signals that are very similar or appear to be but yet when summed together have a big dip like this one of those signals has been reversed in polarity hence, at, at that frequency hence creating an all-pass filter all-pass filter has been in place which is why and this this is a base model vehicle uh, this is a Toyota obviously we're here at the radio testing speaker wires out of the radio not amplified um, so it's it's a technology that's incorporated even in the most basic of systems at this point so now if it was the amplifier let's say this one was the JBL system we would want to be testing this at the amplifier correct correct any, any of the signal going to the speakers now there's another possibility when testing for all-pass filters if each of the channels independently looks relatively flat but when summed together you get a signal that looks like this except all of the bottom end down in the base region has been or is is cut out then at that point it's probably 
a first order all pass filter. So that's where everything below the filter point is reversed. And, and then that obviously can create even a bigger problem when integrating it to the stereo system. Well, you don't want to sum those two signals together to drive a subwoofer. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, you know, if you like our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. And if there's any other topics that you'd like to, uh, for us to discuss, let us know. And don't forget to visit tintworld.com and see, you know, all our services that we offer.